morning and happy fucking Wednesday, you guys. Happy fucking Wednesday. Um, if you're listening to this podcast this morning, that means that you are halfway through the fucking week. Thank you, baby. Jesus. Um, yeah. So give yourself a fucking pat in the back, a slap in that ass or whatever makes you feel good. I don't give a shit. Just whatever makes you smile. Whatever brought you here this morning, I am fucking grateful. And hell fucking yeah. And if you're wondering what that track was, that was called Creative Juices by me, the one and only Vanessa Herrera. And welcome to People Talk Now. Um, yeah, so here we are. Um, hold on, this track's all just trying to keep bumping with us. Um, yeah, so welcome, you guys. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you for being here. And remember, you guys, this is the podcast where you ask about it and I fucking talk about it because that's what I like to do. And I bet you guys are probably wondering, like, Vanessa, why are you so extra fucking chipper this morning? Well, I'll tell you guys why. <laughs> I'll tell you guys why I'm extra fucking chippity chippy today. I got a little sip real quick. Hold on. Um, okay, so let's go right in. Let's go right into this. <laughs> so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to chat with you guys about this morning, but I just said, you know what, let's just go with the flow. I didn't have any particular direction of where I was going to go with this today. I kind of just wanted to go off the rails and just be like, okay, let's just do something this morning that makes you happy. Talk about a topic or anything really that you know, isn't on the schedule. So we're going to go a little off schedule this morning and just kind of discuss some things. And again, you guys, you are free and more than welcome to at any point in time uh, to email me at people talk now at hotmail.com and be like, or you can even drop a comment. Um, and, you know, after you've heard this podcast this morning, be like, hey, you know, I want to give some suggestions or can I be a co-host, anything, you guys. I am welcoming anyone with open arms. Let's keep the good vibes flowing. Um, so, yeah, today uh, I wanted to talk about something that I'm currently studying in school. And so I kind of really wanted to get some opinions from you guys. But so um, right now. I'm in the process of um, researching uh, the the basically the mass incarceration that is going on in the United States, and I bet you're like, "Holy shit, Vanessa! It's only fucking Wednesday. How could you talk about mass incarceration? And it's only Wednesday." <laughs> yeah, I know. Trust me, I don't want to talk about it either. And usually the Difficult topics nobody ever wants to talk about, um, like regular bowel movements, but we won't discuss that today. So yeah, you guys, mass incarceration, what do we think about it? Um, okay, hold on. Hold on one quick little sec. Do, 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 do. We're doing a little quick intermission. Just kidding. I'm grabbing my paper. Oh, oh. Give you guys a little sofa. Okay, so here in front of me. I have some papers. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, a couple of things that I did research. I went into a database, started researching things. So why is America obsessed with revenge and overly punitive punishment? Why? Like, why do... Why? And, you know, it's crazy because I still have to write on this topic, obviously, furthermore. But I just kind of really wanted to talk about it because I started reading on some things and it, and, and it just kind of hit me. I was like, holy shit, this, you know, these articles that I'm reading and this perspective of how I'm thinking now, it's it's really, it kind of hit me in a in a way where, I had never thought about it before. And I'll kind of read to you guys one little part that kind of just had me, let me see, because I have a couple articles here in front of me. 
But one of the ones that just, I think, really just, um, here we go. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I keep doing that. I guess I'm in a very joyful mood this morning. Um, so, oh my God, there's just so much. Um, okay, first of all, before I talk about that, I wanted to kind of just read to you guys really quick what one particular um, uh, former incarcerated person was quoted saying, and he said, um, he said, for so long, I have been told how much potential I have. And then he said, instead, I drifted down the wrong path, creating a real self that was in constant co contention with my ideal self. And this disconnect only caused more depression and despair, leading me deeper and further down the wrong path. And there's so much before this, like, you know, that he, he you know, this, uh, um, this guy here whose name is Jack, Jack uh, I'm sorry, Zach Johnson, who was freed um, from the Georgetown Prison Scholars. Uh, he was a student, an incarcerated student in the Georgetown Prison Scholars Program, and he was freed September 30th after serving two and a half years in Washington, D.C. Correctional Treatment Facility. And again, guys, I'm sorry if this is like so heavy, but this is something that I kind of want to talk about because I found it really intriguing, you know, something I'm studying right now. And I just thought to myself, I was like, dude, how the fuck, uh, you know, if you look at this guy's past, I mean, again, just based on the type of things that in the in the accomplishments that he made during his time being incarcerated it's 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 remarkable and you know he uh he took classes because uh he was taking prisons and punishment it was a class believe it or not prisons and punishment yeah well he was incarcerated and then uh he joined a class that was held at the georgetown's campus and um he also um, in future, we'll enroll in a personal finance course through the university. But it's just what's really crazy about is all, all of this. Or what I'm trying to take you, t tell you guys is that the biggest takeaway that I took from this is this: it's just people who are incarcerated are human beings. They are just like you and I. You know, they they wake up, they have feelings, they they you know they take a breath, just like you and I. And they've made mistakes. And I understand, you know, how some people can think like, well, you know, not all of them are, you know, some of them are just not capable of changing. And again, that's something that we think because it's what's been said to us or what we've heard. And we just assume unless we personally know someone ourselves, family member, or friend, or someone through a friend of a friend who's been incarcerated, then it's totally understandable why someone would think that. And I'm here to say that I believe, I truly believe that people can change, that people can go through something so hard and, you know, you, sometimes we only see two two sides to something you could see the you could see the good or the bad as as cliche as it sounds you could see the good and the bad in something when something bad is happening to us we can decide and say like fuck like this is the end of me or you could say this is the beginning and 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 that's what i'm kind of just trying to tell you guys this morning like like people will kind of behave in a way sometimes that is so hopeless and me kind of um studying about this right now and just really learning about the different types of people and the different types of stories of people who have been incarcerated. It's really beautiful because I say to myself, like, wow, these people have been in, in the prison system or, you know, in the jail system for X amount of X amount of years, but they come out with a Y type of mentality. And, 
It's it's just crazy because um, I will read you guys really quick. Um, so this same same gentleman that I'm kind of reading to you guys about, Zach Johnson, he had heard the final verdict um, that Monday, uh, September 30th, and he said he felt an amazing sense of relief because at that moment he knew that his life, I quote, he said, at that moment I knew my life was now on the right path and that I had right, the right people in my corner to see me through it. Um, and again, he's, he's grateful for the opportunity to prove his potential to himself and see his he sees his release as a turning point. And it's, it's really beautiful because, um, you know, it just goes to show you, man, that people have the power to change, like, who they are. And... Um, and some people have to overcome so much. They have to overcome, like, their the addiction and traumas and things that, you know, is, again, it's like this road to recovery of things that have happened to them in their past. And I think me, like, studying about this in school, like, it's just so beautiful because it's giving me, like, another perspective. Like, I've always been very open-minded to, you know, people who have been incarcerated. Like, I've never in my life have ever felt like oh holy shit like here's some person that's been in jail like holy fuck like let me back the fuck up let me put my wallet back in my purse or some shit no and uh holy fucking shit man these fucking neighbors and stuff man always with the fucking car alarms and shit god damn no respect for the podcast this morning it's like what the fuck Anyways, I'm so sorry about that, you guys. But um, anyways, uh, people who have been formerly incarcerated, it's like they're just regular people like you and I. And uh, that was a, a really, this article when I read it um, about a, he was a, a scholar that was freed from jail. And um this guy's gone on and done amazing things. And this was just recently, you guys. And that's the crazy thing. You know, that's what I was going to tell you guys is that some like I fucking swear, you guys, sometimes we don't hear about things that really matter. You know what I mean? Like, I've always felt like, holy shit, whenever there's something fucking happening in another part in this like a police chase, for example, on TV, I always think to my fucking self, what the fuck are they hiding from us now? Like, what? what are they hiding from us now? Like, what's really going on? Like, that they want every motherfucking person in the world's attention on a high-speed fucking chase. And what the fuck's going on in the background? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if anyone else thinks that. Maybe I'm being paranoid. I don't fucking know. But I always feel like, all right, you know? So, yeah, it was it was really beautiful because this was recent. And, again, uh, the guy who was uh, formerly incarcerated, he was, he, uh, his name was um, Zach Johnson, and uh, it was a, it's a really beautiful story. Um, if you read the story, you won't be sorry. It's a really good story that was written by um, the author of that article. Was, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I think his name is Curran Stockton. And the article is amazing. It gave me another perspective, and it's really crazy because I'm supposed to write about this um, you know, midterms and things are coming up. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely really, it was really helpful to, to just kind of what the fuck is up with these neighbors, man? Like, do they not hear their car going off? It's kind of like a baby going off outside. Thank you. It's like they heard me. Is it off? Let me see. Yep. It's off. Jesus fucking Christ. So hard to think. And talk to all you beautiful people when there's just like a horn blaring in my ear. <sighs> Anyways, I'm so sorry, you guys. But the article is really beautiful. And I love it because it's going to give me a really amazing thing to write about. And I love writing. If you guys know me. You already know that I fucking love writing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, okay, we got a couple more to go through, but don't worry. And I'm sorry if this, if this topic today, you just find it so boring and you're like, oh my God, I don't care a shit about mass incarceration. Well, how does that affect me? Um, okay, first of all, you don't actually care 
what's going on. If you do not fucking know that the United States has the fucking highest population for mass incarceration, like, look that up. Tell me why the fuck this is going on. Like, has anybody not paid attention to this? We are the highest, okay, in the country, all right? And this, I am pretty positive that there is other countries that are a bit more violent than us, but some will beg to differ. Anyways, moving on. Sipping on my tea, minding my business with my pinky up in the air. Mm-hmm. Mm. Some out there will say that this tea is spiked, but don't believe them, y'all. Don't believe them. Okay. Moving on. There is another article that I found here, you guys. Doing my research. And um, this article has five tips for talking about criminal punishment to help end mass incarceration. So, wow, you guys, I'm not making this up. This fucking person's alarm came on again. Like, what in the loyal, holy, macaroni fucking fuck? Wow. Anyways, you guys... I highlighted some really amazing key points that the state's news service provided for us by Joe Watson. Joe Watson, if you're out there, thank you so much for this piece of information because this is going to be very useful towards my paper and how I'm going to proceed with writing it. So Joe Watson says, how we talk about social, social justice issues matters. Um, he said, we challenge criminalization, oppose prison expansions, and advocate to reduce the size and scope of the system, including both physical places of incarceration and systems of control, surveillance, and supervision. He said, in this work, we often encounter journalists who are eager to understand this work and allies who want to support it. But sometimes the way people talk and write about incarcerated people in the criminal punishment, I repeat, let's go back to that. But sometimes the way people talk and write about incarcerated people in the criminal punishment system can reinforce negative ideas about those who are system involved and undermine support for human policies. So he goes on to give us five, what he considers five tips for talking about criminal punishment to end mass incarceration. So first of all, his tip number one is to use first people language. And he says, often news stories about someone with a criminal record refer to that person as a criminal, hashtag, I mean, a hashtag, I'm sorry, a quote unquote criminal or a quote unquote convicted felon or quoted an ex-con or an offender in quotes. This language can be dehumanizing and just, it's just fucked up. He didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> we like to use people first language, saying things like people who are formerly incarcerated or a person who is system involved. That's what he says would be helpful to say instead of calling them ex-cons, offenders, convicted felons, and criminals. Using People First Language will help remind your audience that people who are formerly incarcerated are members of families and community, which is true. goes back to what I was saying, you guys. These people, they're just like you and I. And they're regular humans. They're, you know, they just made mistakes. They had to get locked up in a room and, you know, unfortunately be, um, you know, kind of casted from society for an X amount of time, depending on the severity of the crime that was committed. And on here, tip number two, it says, check your biases. It says, what are your beliefs about people who have been incarcerated? And, 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 I'm, and that's my question. Like, what are your beliefs? Like, what do you think about people who have been incarcerated? And um, I'm going to first, first of all, I'm going to say like, I have met some people that have been incarcerated and the coolest fucking people in the world. Like, coolest. The coolest, more down to earth. Um, and you know why? I, I, you know, I have my theories as to why. And I think that's because people who have been incarcerated have done with so much less bullshit than we have, like, 
in a sense that they haven't been, you know, they don't, they're not brainwashed every day by this idea that we need to be like um, fashionable, that, you know, we need to obtain a certain type of career. Um, just a lot. It's, there's so much that goes into this. Um, they're just not seeing the world and the way that people do every day and they take it so seriously. And when you're in life, when life in prison, you know, things are hard, but yet the living aspect of it is so simple because, you know, you're just, you're getting up and you're taking care of your hygiene and all these things, but you're not really worrying about society in the way that people who are not incarcerated are worrying about it. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, um, you know, they're just regular people like you and I, but they've ha faced some hardships and made some decisions. But at the end of the day, I always believe that people can change, you know? Um, people who have dealt with addiction or homelessness or lived in poverty, like that's another question you need to ask yourself. Like, check your biases. How do you feel about people that have faced addiction, people that are homeless, people who have lived in poverty? Like, how do you, you got to check your biases in that moment. You got to ask yourself like, damn, how do I feel? I'll tell you how I feel. I feel like fucking A, man. Like we've all dealt with some tough shit. And if you've never dealt with homelessness, if you've never dealt with being on the streets, then um, I'm sorry, you've never really struggled that much. Like I, like I'm telling you, like it's it's a fucked up thing, all right. Like I remember sleeping at a park for three fucking days once, all right. Sleeping in a in a in a tube. Um, and I'm being very transparent with you guys here, man, because you know what I I had to deal with it, and I'm saying like, you know, if there's ever a time in your life where you didn't experience just being out in the cold, um. And you've never experienced like not knowing what's going to come next. And you just have always woken up knowing where and what was coming to you next. Like you, everything's just been handed to you. Then you don't know. You just don't know. And you can't comment on it. You, you really can't, you know, say like, oh, yeah. Like, because there was a point in my life where I slept on the streets and it was my choice, you know, but the thing is, is that I struggled and, you know, I, I, I was at a park sleeping inside of a fucking uh, playground children's tube, like just trying to stay warm. Got woken up in the morning by sprinklers, the sprinklers, water, you know, coming into the tube, hit me in the face. And that's cold reality right there. That's real shit, you know, because until you've actually dealt with doing the, something like that happening to you, then you don't know, you know, you don't really know and you can't really judge people and be like, oh my God, why are they like this? You know, when you're fucking homeless, it is so hard for you to go and for you to get a clean shower, for you to, you know, figure out where you're going to get your food from and things like that. So, you know, people, you always got to check your biases, man. Like, how are you, what is your play in this when, um, people who are addicts have come towards you and how are you treating these people you know like you 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 mustn't treat them with fear and I'm not saying that you know people who are addicts you know haven't had their moments where maybe they didn't really make the like best of best decisions you know but again just really check your biases and understand that these people that have gone through these rough times, whether it was addiction, homelessness, they've been incarcerated, or they're just lived in poverty for most of their lives, that they're people like you and I, and maybe they just haven't been blessed with maybe as many opportunities as you and I have, or, you know, their life was a little bit more rough, you know, different. And it doesn't mean that if given the opportunity that, they might not turn around and change themselves. So just really think about that for a second. Uh, 
and ask yourself, do you believe people with these experiences deserve to be heard? My answer is yes, but I want to know what your answer is. Because I really think that everybody deserves a chance. You know, and all my life I've always just been like, oh, you're so gullible. You're so, you know, you just, you have so, you you just believe the the good and everything. And I think to myself, shouldn't we? You know, because I think a lot of the problems stem from when one person, you know, develops a mistrust towards another person and then tries to feed that mistrust to someone else and then so on and so forth that we build this little army of hatred towards someone that really needs our help, really needs our compassion. So, um, yeah, this is something that is, I thought it was really beautiful. And so towards the end here, uh, towards the end of this one, he says, if you can admit your personal biases, you can correct them. When you're sharing your stories about people who have been incarcerated or are part of our marginalized communities, check your biases. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is so true, you know, because if you've ever even discussed about somebody who has gone to jail or been incarcerated when you see it on the med- social media or on the news and you're just like, fuck that, that's not enough time. Like, what gives you that power? Who gave you that power? And, 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 and ask yourself for a second there, like, really check yourself in that moment and be like, damn, like, why do I have this type of hatred? Like, why don't I think that this person deserves you know, some type of chance. And and these are for, sometimes it's so crazy, man, because these people that get locked up sometimes get locked up for such insane amount of time for like, you know, drugs and, you know, burglary. And um, again, it's so crazy. I'm not, when I'm talking about people that have been incarcerated, I'm in no shape or form right now at the moment talking about, you know, men who have molested children, people that have killed people. I'm just talking about the insane amount of incarcerated people that are in the system to the point where they're, they're you know, there is more of them than there is of us. And that's insane because... It's, it, it is like, it's just crazy because there's so many of them and they're stacked in there. And, 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 and it's just crazy because to me, it's like, how can someone, a judge be like, all right, so, all right. So you got caught with an X amount of fucking marijuana, right? This guy's, you know, you're going to get 15 years. And it just, I think what struck me when it came to the punishment um, you know, was that I, when they said, imagine you sit, you're in your house and you're sick with the flu and just being in your house for like about three to four days, almost a week, it's just unbearable. Cause you're just like, ugh, like part of your body just wants to be outside. You just want to be outside with nature. You just want to be outside, but just think you're enclosed inside of your house for four or five days. And you're like, Oh God, I feel like I've been, I've been locked up for locked in here, locked up for X amount of time, for X amount of days. I've just been in my house, not going out. But imagine someone choosing the time on your punishment. And within that time, they're like, okay, so we're going to go ahead and give you 15 years. And that's how we're determining if if you've learned your lesson or not. All right. So we're going to lock you up in this room for 15 years without seeing the daylight other than when you get your exercise, perhaps, maybe. But again, you're going to be locked into this room with, you know, while everything on the outside is still going on, like your family, you know, they have kids, they have marriages, or maybe not. They had significant others. They had a whole life. Life keeps going on. Everything's evolving around them. They lose family members. Family members get married. Their family forgets about them. And it's just crazy because it's like, I didn't really think, how much like this was going to affect me. Like when I read it, I was like, wow, I need to tell people on my podcast because like people need to know, like really, you know, it's not, it's not really talked about, you know, that much. Um, it wasn't up until recently that I started hearing, um, about the homeless population in LA, how it's getting really bad. And I said to myself, like, holy fucking shit. 
finally someone's like talking about it, you know, like finally it's being brought up and it, you know, because it should be brought up. Um, tip number three on the, the five tips that we're I'm kind of reading to you guys here about criminal punishment to help end mass incarceration. Tip number three, it says humanize, don't, don't pathologize, pathologize. People with contact with the criminal punishment system have often suffered abused. They faced addictions or battled other demons, but trauma is never the whole story. When you think of these stories, focus on people's resilience, survival, and complexity. Reinforcing personal victories is an important part of telling these stories. Listen carefully to people who are system involved. And that is a term that is um, being referenced here for us to meant for us to um uh for us to call people who um who have been incarcerated instead of calling them the things that has come naturally over the years saying things like criminals convicted felons ex-cons and offenders you know number four uh tip number four says question authority it says as a former journalist who has worked for multiple magazines and newspapers, including Phoenix New Times and the Arizona Republic, had an editor who once offered, who once offered, if your mother tells you she loves you, be sure to get a second source. Um, this, I, I don't know if some of you will get this, but because I'm a journalism student, I totally understand what it means. It's like, don't ever um, think that your first source is telling you the truth. And that's why I say, you guys, like, even after here, just like, what the hell is she talking about? I don't understand. Well, go look it up. Go look up mass incarceration in the United States. Do your research. Look on it. You'd be surprised. It's really interesting. Um, so on here, it says, in other words, no one is above fact-checking, including our, mother law, our mothers and law enforcement. I'm sorry. Police and prosecutors are not neutral actors in the criminal punishment system. They have a worldview and an agenda. So when you read a newspaper or watch the local news, don't assume that law enforcement's version of the uh, facts is including official, in quotes, <laughs> police records and county attorneys' filings gives you the full picture. And I, and I think it's a good point. Like, you shouldn't just assume that because someone's in a position of authority that that just means that it's true. Like, come on, guys. We've learned a lot already from the past decade or so, or if you're younger than that in the past five years of the capabilities that the uh, police enforcement have on people or in their communities. But again, that's not to say that all police officers are bad. Um, and tip number five, rethink our criminal justice system. Um, okay. So it says Arizona, AFSC, Arizona, doesn't use the term criminal justice system because the system that's, because the suggest, that suggests that the system is about justice. Instead, we talk about criminal punishment system or criminal legal system because the system as it exists is focused on punishment, not justice. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think that they're focused on just punishing people like getting them in there all right it's like a constant like all right let's process these people let's get them in let's get them in let's get them in or do you not real justice fosters accountability and healing by those who have committed harm and forgiveness and compassion from survivors we should be mindful of the language we use around this issue in order to help build alternatives to the punishment focused system and at the end he goes on to say that with these five tips, you may begin to notice when your local newspaper reporter or newscast uses dehumanizing, stigmatizing language in the stories of people who are system involved. Call them out. Write letters to your editors. Post stories on social media and educate your friends incorporating these tips into your own thinking on these issues with help of AFSC. Build a support for humane, just policies. That's what I feel like I did here. I'm just, uh, I said, you know what? Let me tell my friends, let me tell my listeners of what I learned on here and keep sharing it so that you guys know that there is other ways that are more humanizing to address people who have been formerly incarcerated. Like you don't have to call them these things because when they get out, they're trying to change their lives. They're trying to like start back. And you can imagine that that's already difficult enough. People are not accepting 
um, it wasn't until recently I heard that they're going to, I'm not sure how much of it is true, but I'm just going to tell you guys what I heard. And I heard that they were thinking of putting, um, like taking out the box that says, have you been uh, convicted of a felony on the job applications? So, um, and then like the employers instead is going to be like, well, you know, get they're going to put another option on there and be like, if you, you know, you don't have to check that, but you just have to put like kind of like what it is or what, or if you were, you know, just ex- more like explain why, but you don't have to put like how long or blah, blah, blah. You don't have to put any of that really. So I thought that was pretty crazy. That's really, um, what's the word? Like groundbreaking. <laughs> um, so, you know, let me see here. I'm just moving along, just moving along. Oh my God, I'm such a geek. I'm like always, um, okay, goody, goody, goody. Okay, so last one I'm going to share with you guys. I won't do all four articles because I don't want you guys falling asleep on a Wednesday. Okay, I need you guys to stay up. Okay, guys, let's stay alive. Okay, so this other one, it's, uh, it's, this article is called the IRA and SLAA. It's not IRA. It's, it's more like the IRAA and the SLAA moving beyond nonviolent and drug offenders to address mass incarceration. And this is an article by the state's news service. Thank you. State's news service. Um, this is an article by Jonathan Blanks. Um, So mass incarceration has become the term to describe the millions of people held in jails and prisons through the United States. Um, The opposite statistic that Americans make up roughly 5% of the world's population, but hold 25% of the global prisoners remain true. Part of the reason for this is that the United States incarcerates individuals for much longer sentences than most of the rest of the world. And while nonviolent drug offenders serving decades-long draconian sentences have gotten the most attention in in legislation, presidential debates, and executive communications, the data shown shows that most people who are serving time in prison are in for violent for violent offenses. Now, what violent means varies by jurisdiction, jurisdiction illegal possession of firearms being a driver of a getaway car and burglaries against vacant properties can nevertheless be considered violent in some states, but meaningfully reducing our incarcerated population will unquestionably require releasing people who have been convicted of serious violent crimes. If you just flinched a bit, bear with me. Most, Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Vanessa. I'm over here beating myself up you guys are so lucky you don't have to see that you're just listening thank thank you thank you okay so most people who are sentenced to prison are going to be released at some point right guys right okay they will be at some point be expected indeed obligated to rejoin society so for most inmates the issue of release is the question of when not if if it follows if it follows then that if we want to reduce the prison population, we may be able to use early release as a mechanism for doing so while preserving the ideals of justice. So you guys are going to like this. Maybe you won't. I'm not really sure. Okay. All right. So I saw while I was reading this article something really cool because it says that um, this new law... Okay, so building on this science, local lawmakers want to expand IRAA to cover the individuals who were under the age of 25 when they committed a crime for which they were convicted. And this new law is known as the Second Look Amendment Act of 2019. Um, And although this act has already pretty much drawn criticism um, from, uh, it says, and the hyperbole from the police chief and the U.S. Attorney's Office for District of Columbia... There's good reason to believe that this law will serve the best interest of D.C. and the eligible offenders. You guys, that's really awesome because, you know, there is, you guys, oh, my God. Okay, there has been, 
stories where people on, um, you know, what is the word here? What is the word we said that we were going to say? Um, uh, people who have been formerly incarcerated or system involved. Yes. Okay. So people who have been system involved. So we're going to start saying now. Okay. People who have been system involved um, sometimes have been accused of things that of crimes that they, they didn't commit and maybe at the time didn't have evidence. I mean, come on, you guys, there's stories of people um, back in slavery times, you know, I hate to bring that up, but there's people that were convicted of murders and things like that. And, you know, because they had no rights, they, they you know, they weren't given a chance. They were just locked up because of the color of their skin and then come to find out, like, you know, decades later that they were innocent. And this is really cool because it's a really amazing chance for people to just especially, you know, for people that are really trying to change. And they've been, you know, they've been system involved that they have the potential for, for, you know, for basically uh, just rehip, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I can't even talk. <sighs> For just becoming a functional member of society and getting a second chance at life, essentially. And, and this kind of thing will allow, you know, judges to determine if they, these people have matured and they've, they've become better people while they were incarcerated. So um, basically, this is going to apply for uh, inmates for, for now um, that... Inmates that have served at least 15 years of their sentence but are not yet eligible for parole may apply for early release with this new act, this Second Look Amendment Act of 2019. So, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody knows family members, but this is definitely uh, people or friends of friends that have been incarcerated. But definitely this is something that, um, you know, should be looked at. Uh, and, and this is the part that got to me, and I'm going to share this part with you guys. So... This is, I don't know, this is something that uh, you should definitely hear. So, it says, for, but 15 years is a very long time for a human being to spend living in a cage. The offenders, friends, and loved ones have gone about their lives without them. The world has changed dramatically during that time. An incarcerated, pers an incarcerated person has missed techno technological innovations and cultural changes but also graduations, weddings, births, funerals, and other social functions that help bring joy and comfort to our lives. Moreover, the personal changes between adolescence to adulthood are considerable for most individuals. One not need to be a neuroscientist or sociologist to understand that most people behave differently in middle age than they do in the middle or late adolescence. Whether or not an offender has been punished enough will vary, but no one can honestly say that 15 years in prison is a slap on the wrist. When I, when I heard that, I said to myself, shit, as a kid, spending a day in a room if you're grounded is fucking hard enough. Can't even imagine spending 15 fucking years in one room, you know, not having the liberty to go. And like I said, this is for people that have done, you know, what... People consider violent offenses, uh, the judges, which is, you know, uh, Grand Theft Auto. That, you know, dude, we are all the product of our upbringing and people make mistakes. And I'm not saying it's okay for someone to go and fucking steal a car. But maybe, you know, some of these people have not been given the opportunity. And, um, yeah, li life has sometimes been different for people that have been in this occasions and it doesn't excuse for the choices because at the end of the day we all have a choice but again it is definitely a different way of looking at it because a lot of the time these people um, who have been system involved have dealt with traumas and they didn't know how else to to cope with the traumas that they've dealt with so yeah you guys oh my god I am, I don't know, I really felt like talking to you guys about this today, about mass incarceration, and, you know, you guys definitely 
should, you know, look it up and, 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 and do your research, you know, because, oh my God, man, you'd be surprised how much I've came across, um, in the past, uh, in the past week, how much I've came up with, um, or what I've seen basically on mass incarceration has just blown my mind because, you know, you think like, damn, like, okay, you know, you see, you drive in LA, you drive by in the, on the LA freeway and, you know, you see the prison or you see the jail there and you see, and you think nothing of it, you know, I've been next to buses that are transporting, um, system involved people. And, um, yes, I don't really think about it too much. And, when I started reading more and more on this and like seeing how overly packed our prison systems are and uh, jails uh, and just kind of reading the, the, the statistics that go into it that says that people of color make up at least 37% of the U.S. population and 67% in the prison population. Um, it's just crazy, you know, hearing things in an article saying that one out of three black boys born today can expect to go to prison at some point in their life. And I said, damn, that's pretty fucking high statistic. And this is fucked up. Like, just reading that, I'm like, like, it just pisses you off because, you know, they're children, they're kids, they're somebody's kids. And, you know, what is happening? What is happening right now in our criminal justice system that you know, these judges in these courthouses think like, all right, well, it's much easier and it'd be better if I just, uh, you know, go ahead, let's give them uh, X amount of years and, you know, let's, th let's throw away the key and let's, that'll solve that issue. But little do they know that they're just actually creating more problems. If you, you know, there's, they don't know how this is actually affecting the families and, and and everything has like a domino effect, you know, and yeah. And so I really just wanted to come share you guys with this information that I had found and, you know, because I love to read, I love to geek out and I just like finding out information. That's what a journalist does. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to share this with uh, my listeners and see what they think. Um, yeah, and so let's... Thank you guys so much, by the way, for listening to that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to end, end this segment with uh, my joke of the day. And again, you guys, if you guys have any questions on or you guys want to talk to me about this uh, topic today, like, oh, there anything that I said or that I shared from these articles that you want to kind of give me some feedback on or you want to talk about with me, that's completely fine. I'm up for it. Um, you can go to peopletalknow.com. Um, go, you know, scroll down, leave me a little comment in there, put your email, you know, type a little something in there, send it to me. It comes directly to me, guys. Don't be afraid to message me. Um, yeah, and then this is obviously going to be on People Talk Now. If you're not listening, to you uh, you could also listen to this podcast through Libsyn. Um but if not, you know, it will be on all my social media sites. And yeah, feel free to go follow me on Instagram, uh, People Talk Now. Uh, I have a Twitter, People Talk Now underscore, and People Talk Now Facebook, and People Talk Now at hotmail.com. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. What? Anyways, let's move on. What is the joke of the day? So, What's the difference between a hooker and a drug dealer? I'll give you guys a couple seconds to answer that. All right, while you guys are processing that, I've got the answer for you guys. A hooker can wash her crack and resell it. Ooh, with a burn. I can hear you guys laughing in your car right now, saying Vanessa's a damn fool. What the fuck? Why would she tell me a joke like that this early in the morning? Well, just remember, guys, while you're driving on your way to work, on your way to school, on your way to Bay Bay's house to get some nookie, just remember that Vanessa told you that joke today. Now, 
as always, I like to leave you guys with a new word of the day because I want my listeners to become the most educated motherfuckers on the planet. So I'm going to leave you guys with the word of the day. The word of the day is called Belfry. I hope I said it right. Let's go ahead and play that. Belfry. Oh, Belfry. My bad. See? See what this why it pays to learn. So, Belfry, word of the day. The definition of Belfry says a bell tower, especially one surrounding or attached to another structure. A room or framework for enclosing a bell. The seat of the intellect. It says, surprisingly, it says, did you know that belfry does not come from bell? And early belfries did not contain bells at all. Belfry comes from the Middle English burfry, a term for a wooden tower used in medieval sieges. The structure could be rolled up to a fortification wall so the warriors hidden inside could storm the battlements. Over time, the term was applied to other types of shelters and towers many of which had bells in them. See? So I really hope you learned something today. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you guys, it was so fucking lovely. It was a real fucking slice having you guys here today. And, uh, you know, like I say, you guys, drop me a fucking message anytime you guys want. Don't be afraid, man. T talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me what you guys want me to talk about. If there's some... Shit, remember you guys, I, I, I'm, I'm lo I love researching. So if there is anything that you guys feel that um, needs to be talked about, or maybe you want your story heard on my podcast, I would fucking love to talk about your story. I would love people to know about you. So if you want people to know about you, you got to let me know about you. Okay? Okay. So I want to leave you guys... What a positive, a positive message that I, you know, leave you guys with some positive words today before you go off on your beautiful morning. And that is this. There is no one out there that's like you. But do not, uh, do not ever hold yourself higher than anybody because I think that causes real conflict and hurt when we put ourselves above other people because no one is above anybody. I just, just, just know that you're created equal. We all have the same opportunities every morning and don't ever be upset or mad at anybody because they're going ahead of you. You should cheer them on, applaud them, be happy for people's success and be happy with yourself and be grateful and, 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 and just be proud of yourself. Even if no one is proud of you, and just remember that you're fucking gorgeous, you're handsome, you're sexy, you're fuckable. You're all of whatever the hell you want to be, man. You are it. All right? You're a bad mother. Shut your fucking mouth. So it was a real fucking slice having you beautiful ass gorgeous people here this morning. And you guys already know. You already know. Okay? That this was People Talk Now. And I was your host, Vanessa Herrera. And just remember, man. Share the, share the love, share the wealth, and have a kick-ass fucking Wednesday. And I'm going to leave you guys off listening to my jam. So have a good fucking morning, guys. See you later. Yeah.